coming to you live <clears throat> from Strong Island. And as you can see, we've brought along a special guest, the newest member of the Prop the Mic Discord team. Dave and I were super pumped to uh, get him on board. So please welcome Reed the Green, a.k.a. Jordan, to the podcast for the first time. Welcome, Jordan. We are very excited to have you join the pod. Before we get started, we just got to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Props.Cash. We 100% could not do what we do without Props.Cash. So if you think you're ready to level up your prop betting game, use code PTM at sign up to get 25% off your first month. How's it going, Jordan? Welcome to PTM. It's going great. Glad to be a part of this. Um, been loving being a part of the Discord team and um, first time recording a podcast. So this will be fun. It will be. It will be. I'm excited. How about you, it Dave? It's okay. Jordan, you're doing better than Tom and I did on our first podcast. On our first <laughs> podcast, it's a, it's up on YouTube if you ever want to watch it. But um, Tom Tom was basically uh, on video, and I couldn't even get my video to work. Uh, so I just did it by audio, and he did it by video. It was a disaster. Um, <laughs> so on our first one-year anniversary, I went and listened back to it. It was a lot of fun to uh, make fun of ourselves. So um, you're already doing better. So all good. All right. Um we got a huge slate tonight. This, like I said yesterday, when we when we did the pod, this is a weird week because the NBA is scheduling around NCAA, right? So you got these big, big slates followed by a small slate. Today is another big slate, huge slate, twelve games. Tomorrow is another small slate. I think there's only two games tomorrow. Um, so these are tip, difficult slates to navigate through because you got lots of options. You got lots of blowouts potentially, a lot of thirteen point spreads. But I think we've picked our, our favorite seven games here. We're going to go through those, um, give out a few picks. And uh, like always, if you guys have questions, drop them into uh, uh, YouTube or uh, X, and we'll try to answer them as we go. All right. Let's Sounds dive good. into the first game. we got the Warriors, Magic. Magic are minus five and a half at home. Total is 218 and a half. We're going to start this off right with a former Duke player. Jordan, who do you like? on the magic yeah i like uh wendell carter jr i like his uh points plus rebounds um looking at his matchup history he's done pretty well against the warriors i think the one miss that he had um, on there was um because his minutes were low i don't know if it was an injury or, or what happened foul trouble um it looks like what was it 18 minutes that he had uh oh, there we go yeah, Wendell is definitely known for getting in foul trouble, so I wouldn't put that past him. Um, you're on his, what did you say, points and points rebounds? Points plus rebounds, yes. All right, let me get that up. Okay. So um, if you go to his head-to-head -head, um, with them. Yeah, 23, 23, and 8, right? Yep, and, and then if you go down to the historical data, um, a lot of centers have been clearing their points plus rebounds props against – uh, Golden State, Ooh. and then also just like he looked great in the model too um, with the sheet they all posted and Discord today. Um, he looked great. So um, I was also kind of looking at his rebounds plus assists because um, he's cleared that and I think like eight or nine of the last ten. But uh, just going the historical data and uh, his matchup history, I was just like, let's just run, let's just run points plus rebounds. I'd like to weigh in. This was actually one of the first guys I mentioned to Dave on the phone this morning. I know he's always a little bit hesitant to play Wendell Carter because of the foul, the, the foul trouble uh, issues. But uh, I always, I always like to start digging into uh, guys on on uh, days rest, on back to backs, on extra rest. If you could just pull up his splits on three days rest, Dave. This was a play I was all over. Uh, just mainly specifically because of this. Uh, Days rest. <clears throat> go. There you go. <clears throat> um, the points he's cleared. I think the points and rebounds. Uh, he's missing one, but if you look at just straight points, he's been a uh, he's been a beast on uh, extra rest, getting to twenty multiple times uh, in these uh, these five games on three days rest. So, just wanted to point that out. Cool. Yeah, I, I had him at a uh, seventeen and a half at like minus one forty. I think I got it on bet three six five. Um, mm -hmm. So, so he would have cleared that line every every single time this year. So that's great. Yeah. yeah, and you you could probably still get it there um, if you're willing to pay the juice, right? Because eighteen and a half is minus one hundred four. So I'm sure seventeen and a half you could still get on some books if you alt it down. 
Uh, yeah, actually, it's PRA. Yeah, I was draft, looking at his, I was draft looking at his is, PRA. God, sorry, go ahead, Dave. No, I was just saying DraftKings is 17 and a half for minus 125. So still yeah, really go. good value there. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, Tom. I, mean, I, got, I got him at 120, not 140. Sorry, okay, nice. perfect. Yeah. And uh, no, I was looking at his PRA. I know you mentioned the RA. So we're all we're in the same wheelhouse here. It was 19 and a half earlier today. It was it was definitely a play. I was uh, I was uh, very interested in. So. Yeah. All right, love Wendell Carter as long as he stays out of foul trouble. This one's this one's another green bar on this chart. I love it. Um, let's go to the Warrior side, Tom. You got to pick on the Warriors, right? Yeah, I like Steph in this matchup. Let me find my notes here. Uh, over uh, 25 and a half points, minus 122 on FanDuel. Let's see if it's – that was from a little while ago. Let's see if it's moved at all. Um, 20, yeah, I got 26 and a half. Let's see. Um, yeah, you're, you're at this point you're paying 26 and a half. Minus 106 is your best value on okay. FanDuel. I still don't mind it. So let me uh, let. So, so they are, uh, the Warriors are on a back to back today. Um, <clears throat> this season, uh, Steph is averaging 32.3 points per game in uh, road back to backs. If we go all the way to last season, still awesome at 31.8 uh, points per game in road back to backs. Uh, I think that includes 12 back to back games, uh, of which, uh, four of them, four times in just 12 games, he scored 40 plus points. Uh, so I think, I think it could be, and he had 36 points against Orlando on January 2nd, uh, De'Aaron Fox just played them and put up 31. Uh, so I, I like Steph to clear his line. I also like a sprinkle on him, uh, to get up to like 35 and even maybe a little sprinkle on 40 plus. Yeah, I, he had a 60-point output against Atlanta. That game you can see right in the middle of the chart mm -hmm. um, on a on a back-to-back -back away. So yep. definitely uh, three out of those four that you mentioned that were 40-plus were this season. Yep. Um, so I like that a lot. I don't know if the presence of Draymond is, is, uh, is, is reducing his scoring at all. That would be my only thing that I would want to dig into because obviously most of these were in the earlier part of the season. But, um, but yeah, no, it seems like a good matchup. Uh, Orlando, I you know, is pretty good defensively, but this is probably the one spot where um, where the yes. Warriors can take advantage. So, uh, mm -hmm. good find. All right, I think that's all we had in this game. Let's move on to uh, what I would deem as one of the worst games to watch tonight: uh, the Nets at the Wizards. Uh, the Wizards are getting three and a half points at home. Total is two twenty and a half. Uh, I know both of you guys like one of these players on the Wizards. Uh, Jordan, why don't you start off? Uh, who, who was your play for the Wizards? Yeah, it was Denny Avdia, and uh, I was looking at his assists. Um, hmm. So, wait for you to pull that up. Yeah, I just got to take these filters off. Yep. All right. So, if you go to, you can leave it on 2023, and then if you go to uh, without uh, Kulubi, or however you say his last name. Kulubali. Um, Kulubali, yeah. Yeah, I, I've never been able to say his last name. Uh, there we go. Yeah, Woo. so this year it's pretty looks pretty good. <laughs> it's like green. Um, and then if you actually go into like last, even like carrying over into last year, it was, it was pretty like last or last 10 games, I would rather. Mm -hmm. uh, he's cleared this. Yeah. So um, I was on him for that. And I might sprinkle a little bit on, on uh, five assists. Um, just and I also looked at his uh, small forwards recently against um, against Brooklyn and really Whoa. Liked what I saw there. <laughs> That's a lot of green there. Yeah. Josh Hart, Brandon Ingram, Najee Marshall, Herb Jones, Trey Murphy. Wow, this is uh, this is pretty impressive. And even uh, even Franz Wagner. How far down does this list go? Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I saw, I was like, uh, yeah, we're playing this. Yeah. Wow. I'm not, not going to watch a minute of the game, but we're going to play it. <laughs> uh, Denny's one of our favorites. Um, we, we have our like uh, PTM all star team. I think we haven't really talked about who our five top five are this year, Tom. We're going to have to like do that on, a, on a at the end of the season. Pod. Yeah. We'll have to, um, we'll have to do that. Denny last year was always like flirting with a, a, a starting spot on the PTM all star team. So yeah. we, we love Denny. Um, Tom, I think you you had something on him as well, right? 
Yeah, it's funny you were on the assists because I was on uh, his points plus rebounds. So we've got every uh, Denny stat stat uh, category covered here. Uh, I like his PR, 25 and a half. It was minus 106 on FanDuel. Uh, he's cleared in seven of his last 10 games, averaging uh, just a hair under 27 PR. Um, he gets a great matchup. So forwards against Brooklyn, uh, ninth most points per minute since February 1st third most rebounds per minute since February 1st. And uh, when they played on December 29th, he had 34 uh, PR against Brooklyn in that game. So I think we're all high on Denny here. Yeah, look at that. Um, all right. So I, I think I like both of those independently. Would you also maybe think about uh, doing a PRA since you guys yeah. both? Giannis cashed it for us last night. So it's Denny's turn for a PRA play. I thought I thought Giannis was going to cash that in the uh, in the third quarter, and then it took him all the way to yeah. like like a minute left in the game, and then and then they went to overtime, and he like cleared it by twenty. So that was okay. awesome. Um, all right, excellent play. Love Denny. Uh, let's go over to the Brooklyn side, Tom. I know you have um, you have one play over there. Who do you like? Yeah, I like Claxton. Uh, let me find my notes. So I, I uh, also a PR play. 23 and a half minus 120 on DK. Uh, he's cleared in six of 10, uh, six of his last 10 against Washington. I believe all this season, he had 23, 28, and 23. So got would have gotten hooked two times, but you see very, very consistent against Washington. And you cannot ask for a better matchup. Washington's allowed the most points and the most rebounds to opposing bigs since February 1st. So I think this shapes up very nicely for uh, for Claxton um, in you know both categories. Can't get a better matchup. What do you think about that, Jordan? Yeah, I like it. Um, I was kind of looking at his rebounds um, earlier today, um, but I like points plus rebounds too. Yeah, that's what I saw for rebounds. I saw his last four matchups he's cleared against them. Yeah. Seems like a really good matchup for rebounds, um, points as well. If you're afraid um, to play the PR, right, at 23 and a half because you get these two hooks in there, uh, another strategy you can do is just kind of slightly alt down the points, slightly alt down the rebounds, put those two together. So the straight point, point line was 12 and a half. You might even be able to bring that down to 10 um, and then put that with, uh, you know, 11 rebounds, something like that. Um, a little bit more than a double double, and that might might also get you there without uh, the risk of the hook. So, just another way to potentially play uh, Claxton today. Yep. All right. All right. Um, let's move on to the first ESPN game of the night. We've got the Clippers at the Sixers. Um, the return of James Harden. Uh, Sixers are minus six and a half at home. Totals two fifteen and a half. Uh, what do you like in this one, Tom? I think you only, you're the only one who had picks in this one. Okay. Uh, I got a few in this game. So I posted one up to props.cash earlier. Um, I won't waste too much time. Just Harden's, Harden's assist in this matchup. We played it, I don't know, whenever that was Saturday night, I think. Uh, you figured Harden going up against his old Sixers team. His line was eight and a half. You see it. He finished with 14 assists. Uh, he was a beast. Line's the same again. Uh, I don't see any reason not to play this again going up against the Sixers. Um, I think we can move on. Uh, I guess the qu the question is why why did the line not move up? Right, it was eight and a half the other day. Why why is it still eight and a half? Is it just because of this seven assist output against Indy, or they feel like there's some re regression, some adjustments that are going to be made by Philly? I'm sure there I'm sure there'll be some adjustments. I think. Uh, there's only so much Philly can do. Um, and, uh, you know, he's still got to 14. I don't know if they can uh, make enough adjustments to keep him uh, under uh, eight assists. So I, I still like it. All right. Um, and who else did you like in this one, Tom? All right. Uh, could be a sneaky little play on uh, Tobias Harris over two and a half assists. Uh, maybe a nice piece to a builder. Minus 140 on DK. He's done it in six of his last 10. Not look at look at him at home though. Nine of his last ten at home, twelve of his last fifteen at home. Uh, in that game on Saturday night, he had four assists against the Clippers. Remember, he used to be a Clipper uh, for a while, and 
again, cannot get a better matchup. The Clippers have allowed the most assists per minute to opposing forwards uh, since February 1st. So sneaky Tobias Harris play. Love that. Jordan, what do you think about Harris today? Yeah, I mean, it looks like a great matchup. Um, as far as, I mean, it, they've, the Clippers have been pretty stingy as far as assists go <laughs> and, and this year, but um, I mean, it, thinking about Kawhi likes to, uh, he's probably going to face Kawhi, I'm guessing. Um, and so I yeah. think he's going to have to get the ball off his hands a little bit more with the Kawhi on him. So yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Excellent. Tobias is a regular on the alt prop sheet that we put out every day. We always see Tobias pop up there. All right. And what's your last play on this one, Tom? Uh, I like Maxi uh, to do some scoring here tonight. 25 and a half points, minus 122. He's done in six of his last 10, five of his last seven at home. Clippers have given up the fifth most points to uh, point guards since February 1st. And then look at these comps. Dame, 41. This is just since February 1st. Dame, 41. Steph, 41. Dame, 35. Fox, 33. SGA, 31. And then you have uh, Maxi just finished with 24. Uh, that that previous game, so I think uh, I think he's due for a little bit of uh, a bounce back here um, with a kind of you know below average performance that that game on Saturday night. Um, so I, I just love those big outputs by some nice some nice comps for uh, Maxi. Yeah, Maxi loves loves playing at home, so I think that's a great play as well. All right, let's keep moving. We got the Rap, the uh, Knicks at the Raptors. Raptors are getting 13 and a half at home. Let me pause and say that again. The Raptors are getting 13 and a half points at home. That's a crazy, that's like a Pistons number right there. Yeah. And the total in this game to make that even crazier is 211 and a half. Hmm. So they're at home, 13 and a half points, 211 and a half. So proceed with caution. But let's hear what uh, you got, Jordan. Yeah, I had Brunson over six and a half assists. I got it at plus 100 this morning. Um, yep. So, yeah. Still there, I, pretty much. Yep. So probably because of, of that spread. Um, but I could see him just like dishing it out to some teammates. Let's call it a day, get it done in the third quarter. Um, I also looked at his uh, previous matchups um, against Toronto. Um, did pretty well there. Excellent. And then also um, he, he popped on that sheet that y'all posted this morning too. Uh, so I can't remember what he was, what points were versus uh, Toronto, but pre it was pretty good. Yeah, no, it's an it's an excellent matchup. The real question is, is he going to play enough minutes? But we, um, we just said on yesterday's podcast, Tibbs uh, seems to like to keep his starters out there regardless of the score. So – I think Brunson plays some fourth quarter minutes regardless. I think seven assists seems like a, like a no-brainer here, especially at plus plus 100 or even minus 105. Yeah, that, it does seem like Tibbs loves to do that. I mean, I, Hart's been playing like 45 minutes a night. Yeah. So um, he's running the wheels off his starters, but it's good for us, good for props. Good for props, and uh, he gets them ready for the playoffs. So like, yep. like six months before the playoffs start. So, all right, Tom, what uh, what do you like in this one? Uh, I got a, I got a few from this game. Uh, first, let's start with uh, Dante DiVincenzo. Can, one, can we believe Dante DiVincenzo's line is up to 20 and a half? Uh, two, can we believe I'm actually playing it at that uh, level? But <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, look at his last two games, 40 and 31 points. Um the reason why I, you know, not just his recent history with how well he's been playing, he's played 40 plus minutes in each of the last two games, but Dante DiVincenzo is a wing who we've been playing against Toronto. I think every single game we've been targeting wings against Toronto matchup for, for uh, several months now. Uh, they, they do really, really well. Uh, he played them back on January 20th before he was, this was before he was playing 40 minutes a game. This was, uh, you know, when uh, OG was uh, in the rotation full time, he still had 17 points in just 20 minutes against Toronto on January 20th. Uh, we only need him to get to 21 tonight. And based on the last two games, uh, I think he should have no problem getting there. I, I associate uh, Dante DiVincenzo with March Madness. I just kind of like think of those two yeah. things as together. So maybe there's this like extra energy that he's getting from the tournament going on while he's playing, but this guy is like playing out of his mind right now. 
Yeah. Excellent. The volume of three pointers that he's shooting it's insane. is is insane. Let's just take a look, quick look at that. In his last 10 games on props that cash, you can scroll down to uh three point made and three point attempts. He attempted 23 pointers against Detroit the other day, hit 11, which is an awesome yeah. hit rate, but 23 pointers. So I, I could see a similar type approach. I think doing some sort of ladder on his threes, some sort of ladder on his points tonight, that mm -hmm. could be a good play. This might be the last day that you get an opportunity to uh, to get DiVincenzo even at this volume. So. Yeah. All right. Um, what's your next play, Tom? All right. I like uh, Josh Hart rebounds. Another mm -hmm. insane line for uh, somebody of Josh Hart's uh, height to be uh, <laughs> a, a line of 12 and a half rebounds. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, minus 111 on Fendel. He's cleared this in five of his last seven games. Um, again, gets a great matchup. Uh, you know, he, you can you can categorize him. He's like one of these guys that straddles the wing slash forward. Uh, and he's also a little, I think he's probably listed as, he, he's been listed as a shooting guard here. So he's one of these guys that uh, ranges all over the place. Um, but regardless of where you look, uh, Toronto, fifth most uh, rebounds uh, to wings since February 1st fifth most rebounds to forwards. That's actually where he's categorized in cleaning the glass as a forward. Um, so great matchup. I know it sounds high, um, but Josh Hart is just a an elite rebounder. He's got a nose for the ball. They find their way to him. Um, so I like Hart, and I also like another Nick here for rebounds because I was looking, and you know I saw wings fifth most, forwards fifth most. We know actually bigs against Toronto, second most rebounds, uh, per minute since February 1st. So I'm going with Hartenstein here over nine and a half rebounds. It was plus money, plus 102 on FanDuel. Uh, scroll down uh, and look at some of those centers uh, hit rates against Toronto. You'll see some nice stuff. And then a little narrative to throw in. I don't know if you saw, but Mitchell Robinson out of the blue was uh, upgraded to questionable. I don't yeah. think he's, he's not playing today. He'll probably be back in the next couple of games. So his playing time is, uh, you know, this this could uh, be a big change. So this may be one of the last games with giant minutes for Hardenstein here. So I think he'll be uh, looking to uh, do some damage with uh, maybe some playing time uh, in jeopardy with Mitchell coming back. Yeah, it kind of, kind of feels like the Knicks have been better without Mitchell Robinson. So I don't know. I don't know what, what they're going to do when he does come back. But mm. uh, I definitely see that motivation with uh, the yeah. playing time potentially getting into uh, Jordan, you like you like either of those plays? Any of those plays? Uh, yeah, I like I like Hardenstein's rebounds. Uh, I also looked at his assists just as like as a builder. Yeah, it was popping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you go if you go to, um, he's been getting two assists. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like that. If you want to just pair that with something, um, mm -hmm. it's a good little play. Um, and then if you want to sprinkle on something crazy like three assists or five assists, <laughs> uh, you could do that. Um, I don't know if he's gonna get there but definitely love him at two assists yeah i think our guy cash in the uh in the discord also was uh was on that today so that looks like a real steady play to assist put it with you know maybe heart 10 rebounds any any of these plays i think are really good Im imagine like if we were in doing this podcast in october and you were you were told that we were going to play um, DiVincenzo at 20 points and Josh Hart at 12 and a half uh, rebounds. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would be insane. Yeah. Um, all right, let's keep moving. Uh, let's move on to the Rockets Thunder. Uh, Thunder minus six and a half at home. Totals 229 and a half. Uh, Tom, I know you put out a couple plays from this game on the Cash article. Um, you want to just run through them real quickly? Unfortunately, I think we got late breaking news uh, right as we were going to record. It looks like SGA was scratched. Um, so uh, too bad. no SGA play tonight. That's really, uh, hurts my feelings big time. Uh, I don't know. Ch it takes this whole game and just, uh, turns it on its head. I was, I was just all over the Jalen green SGA, you know, scoring ping pong. Uh, you know, I have them, I have, uh, I have them for 30 points each, but, uh, oh, well, um, anyway, I still like Jalen green in this spot. Uh, so he was my other, uh, pick. Um, he's just been awesome without Shangun. I think he's cleared in five of six, if I remember correctly, uh, his points line, uh, without Shangun, um, since he's been out, uh, really been awesome. The, the Rockets in general, just wow. been playing awesome. Um, 
since uh weird because you know Shingun's an awesome player but it's just they've really gotten better i think maybe it's maybe it's opened up some things for for green you know giving him some more space to to do what he does um but whatever it is uh it's working so i love jalen green over 25 and a half points tonight um yeah yeah um this line it's weird though even with sga out this line moved from minus six and a half to minus five it's like hmm. like how do, how does one of the best players in the league only have a one and a half point impact on this game hmm. so uh, that's very curious total moved from 229 um down to 226 so really marginal impact i guess they're thinking that others on the thunder are going to step up uh, but unless yeah. it was already kind of baked in i think he was uh you know he was questionable earlier so yeah it was, was probably kinda, already assumed and that yeah. just kind of pushed it yeah. I, I also thought the line looked fishy uh sga at 29 and a half points was the line and uh yeah, you said that. You before. don't really see you don't really see that too often. Usually he's 31 and a half or or higher. So um all right. Very good. And uh Josh Giddy, you like anything on Giddy or are you gonna lay off now because of uh um because of the news? No, I think if if anything, I would I would think Giddy would get some some additional run uh uh here. Uh, I liked his rebounds. We cashed on it the other day, uh six and a half. Uh going back to it here. He's cleared in six of his last seven at home. Uh, six of his last nine overall, two of three against Houston this season. Um, and uh, he's another guy I, I like kind of similar to Josh Hart in a way because like between a forward and wing and uh, cleaning the glass designations, Houston's allowed the seventh most rebounds to forwards, third most to wings. Uh, so uh, great matchup regardless going back to Giddy. All right. You like that, Jordan? I know you're often uh, playing playing stuff on Giddy, so. Yeah, um, I liked Giddy's uh, rebounds. Also, um, if you just want to like throw in his three-point prop, just one, three. A three, I yeah. Think, I think he's hit that um, in 10 straight, and he also um, – Yeah, that. that's without SGA. Yep, there you go. Yeah, look at that. And then he had four and five in the last two games, which is abnormal for him. Very, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I also really loved Jalen Green's points. I, I was on that this morning. I saw you pop – posted yeah. that so i was like all right i'm not gonna post that but yeah um before the sga news i was kind of also buying into that narrative of him mm -hmm. going back and forth and i'd sprinkled like on 35 points uh yeah and i was like because he's, he's hit that three times in the last like five games so yeah um yeah it was just to win half a unit um on that but we really like him still yeah for sure all right nice I'm looking forward to that game. That game will be fun. Will. Um, all right, let's go to the Spurs at the Jazz. Jazz are minus four and a half at home. Total is 228 in this game. Perhaps one of our favorite players this year, Jordan. Tell us tell us about Mr. Collins. What do you like there? Yeah, I like John Collins' points um, tonight. Uh, Spurs are 29th versus bigs in points. And he's cleared this in eight out of the last 10. So it looks pretty great. Um, also getting it at plus money is uh, pretty great as well. So um, anyways, yeah, playing that. And then if you just go down to his, uh, I, I kind of looked at centers and both centers and power forwards against, um, against them. Yeah, so there's a few uh, looking at that yeah, Gafford 13, Lively 12 is both in the same game. Uh, Bobo had 13. Um, so it was kind of looking at, at Bobo as long with Nurkic and Eubanks. Nurkic didn't get there, but Eubanks and Bobo both did. So um, really liked him um, in this matchup. Yeah. I, I, Wemby is, um, I don't know, is Wemby playing? He probably is, right? He was the only spur I saw with props out earlier. Uh, yeah, I didn't actually check the injury report on this one, but. Uh, assuming he's in, he's he's awesome defensively at blocking shots, but he definitely gets beat a lot by big men. So, and I think a guy like John Collins um, is a very abnormal big man, right? Like he is, he's not that tall, but can leap through the building, except when Anthony Edwards is dunking on his <laughs> head. Um, and he uh, and he, and he's shifty, right? Like he can he can move very quickly around the hoop. So I think Wemby. We'll certainly get some blocks on him, but I think 16 points seems like a home run, especially when you look at that recent track record. So, yeah. 
Um, love that as well. And then you got that OKC and Dallas. Those are those are two very good teams in the last three games that Collins has played against that are not good at defending centers. So I think putting up 16 against OKC, uh, 25 against Houston as well without Shingun, and then third, 21 against Dallas. Those are awesome comps for this game as well. So I love that play. Great yeah. find. All right. Let's wrap it up with our last game, the other ESPN game of the night. We got the Suns at the Nuggets. Nuggets are minus seven and a half at home. Total is 227 and a half. Before we dive into the props, is this a potential Western Conference final or are you guys not buying into the Suns? Jordan, what do you think? I don't buy into the Suns. I just don't. Um, maybe I am a little biased because I'm a Mavs fan and they have their own little thing. I love that picture of Luca just looking at Booker while <laughs> we're putting it to him and <laughs> yeah. the playoffs. Um, so, I, I mean, it's just, are they going to stay healthy? Um, and, and you know, the only time that KD really got it done in the playoffs was when he had Steph, when he's on the Warriors, on a team that's got it done before. So, yeah. I don't know. All right. So you're picking the Mavs to go all the way. That's what I yeah. heard. Yeah. Mav <laughs> Mavs and the Rangers. Parlay <laughs> those two together. We're good. All right. Um, what do you like in this game, Jordan? Uh, yeah, I liked uh, KD's um, rebounds and assists. Mm. Uh, I looked at rebounds first um, because he's done pretty well. But looking at his rebounds plus assists, and he's cleared um, – and for the last six, um, and then, you know, I guess that's six in the last 10. And then uh, against Denver, he's actually done really well um, in clearing both of these lines. Wow. Um, I just be careful. A lot of those are playoff games, so I'm sure his minutes were very high in those games. Yeah, some of those, yeah. Some of those are playoff games. Um, and then I also looked at, um, it's like the last couple where he's really done well in assists, which is, um, that was the one that I was like, I looked initially at rebounds, but his assists um, getting home there. And it seems like I'm um, just paying attention to Phoenix this year. It seems like Durant loves to set up teammates more on the road and Booker loves to score more on the road. And then it just flips um, when they go to hmm. go home. Booker loves setting people up at home, scores a little bit less. KD just scores a little bit more at home. Um, so it's just kind of a little trend I've noticed with that. That's a very interesting. They they definitely do play very differently home and away, um, and maybe maybe that's just the agreement they have. It's like, listen, I'm going to get mine in uh, on the road. You're going to get yours in on uh, at home. So, um, all right, I love that play. So you like the RA though better than just playing the assist line, right? Yeah, I like the RA. Okay. All right. And Tom, um, I think you had a play on the Denver side. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, Jokic rebounds uh, 12 and a half. It was minus 105 on DK. So uh, big news. Zeke Naji is out tonight. So I know that. <laughs> well, that changes everything. Yeah. But listen, listen. So so uh, you would you would think not, right? So uh, Jokic averages this season 34 minutes per game when Zeke Naji plays, regardless of how many, many minutes he plays. That bumps up to 35 and a half minutes in games without Zeke Naji. So a minute and a half more per game uh, without him. Um, so uh, he has cleared in games without Zeke Naji seven of his last 10 this season, averaging 14.1 rebounds, 11 of his last 16, averaging 13.9 rebounds. Uh, and he played Phoenix on March 5th had 16 rebounds in that game. So I think you think it's something that wouldn't really matter, the backup center uh, from one of the backup centers from this team. Um, but I think that little bit, you know, like Jokic just knowing that he's not available, knowing he's got to play probably a couple more minutes and the success he's had against Phoenix, I think it uh, it all plays in. And uh, I think he will clear 12 and a half, uh, no problem. Jordan, you buy in the Zeke Najee narrative here? <laughs> yeah, I was looking at uh, his matchup against Yusuf Nurkic, um, just like historically, and he's been under several games. Um, mm. But um, I'm just kind former of like teammates. Looking at, do what? They were f former teammates. Uh, so maybe uh, Nurk's got uh, Jokic's number. I don't know. A little beef. Little yeah. Beef, yeah. <laughs> um, and I wasn't sure um, looking at the last. Yeah, last matchup he did have 16 and he had 12. So I, 
in the in the past, um, I think I put out a, a play at one point, um, actually alting both of their rebounds down mm. <laughs> because they've done they've both done well against each other, and um, yeah, the former teammate narrative just kind of helps a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, that's always fun. Just you don't you don't get a lot of like tradition traditional big men going up against each other that much in the NBA anymore. So that'll be a good matchup. A lot of uh, a lot of elbows, I'm sure, will be thrown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and your typical Jokic scratch on the arm. He scratch. the guy gets more beat up than any other player in the league. So bright red um, skin. Yeah. <laughs> bright red blotchy skin. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I think that does it, right, Tom? Uh, yeah, I think it does. There's so many games. There's a few I had to leave off the list. I just, I'll just give out the uh, the plays real quick. Just a few others I was on: Halliburton assists, Vooch, uh, Vooch rebounds, uh, Mike Conley points and assists, uh, Jared Allen rebounds, and Clint Capella, your boy, Dave, uh, PR tonight. So. Sold. I don't even need to look at the charts. <laughs> so if any of you guys want to dig into those, uh, those are a few other uh, plays I was on on this massive slate, but. Uh, I think that does it. Jordan, awesome having you on. Um, appreciate uh, appreciate all the work. Uh, we definitely will be getting you back on uh, shortly. That was fun. Um, everyone, enjoy the game tonight. You got a lot of basketball to watch. Um, and I think we're all ready to make some money. So thanks, guys. Let's go.